I've always been the kind of guy who could take a joke, turn a bad situation on its head, and laugh along with the rest of them. That's why, sitting here in a studio, legs crossed in a manner I never imagined I would, I can't help but find the humor in it all. I'm Chris, by the way, but today, it seems I'm Christine, at least in the reflection staring back at me. It started with Lisa, my sister, in one of her brilliant I Need a Favor episodes. College debts had her cornered, and she knew I couldn't say no, not after all we'd been through together. And so, here I was, my pride tucked away somewhere between the high heels I never thought I'd wear and the makeup that felt foreign on my skin. Amy had been in on it too, our childhood friend who had a knack for transforming anything with a pulse. It's for art, she'd said, a twinkle in her eye as she turned me from Chris to Christine. They needed a model and who better than her brother, who stood at six feet with a shock of hair that somehow fell just right after Amy had her way with it. As Lisa paraded clients past, I couldn't help but wonder how many more of these favors I'd end up doing. But then, as I caught my reflection, something in me shifted. Amy was right. I did have the legs for this. It took nearly a full minute to realize the pretty girl in the black dress was really me. The shock had me reaching for a chair, needing to sit down, to ground myself in the reality that was blurring before my eyes. I could hear Lisa in the background, her voice a mix of excitement and relief. We're ready to start, Christine, she said, and I knew there was no turning back. I could see the amused yet appreciative looks from the clients, and a part of me swelled with a strange sense of pride. I was doing something not every guy would have the guts to do. And doing it pretty well, if the nods were anything to go by. Lisa was right, of course, I'd never hear the end of it back home. But as I sat there, Christine for a day, I knew I had more than just helped my sister. I'd stepped into a world completely alien to me and found a piece of myself I never knew was lost. It was unsettling, it was bizarre, it was. Strangely empowering. As the camera flashed, I threw Christine a wink. She winked back, and we both knew that no matter what names we went by, we were in for one unforgettable story. As the days rolled into weeks, Christine didn't just become a persona for a photo shoot, she became a necessity, a character I had to embrace more often than I'd ever expected. Lisa's side project took off like a wildfire, and with it, my temporary stint as Christine became less temporary. The transformation was gradual but undeniable. I found myself more and more at ease with the fabric of dresses against my skin, the click of heels a rhythm I walked without thought. Amy's makeovers became less of an ordeal and more of a routine, each brush stroke on my face a familiar dance. It wasn't just about looking the part anymore. I started to understand Christine, to empathize with the struggles women faced, the shoes they had to fill, both literally and metaphorically. And as I walked the streets, I noticed the change in gazes, less judgment, more acceptance, some even appreciative. Clients came calling for Christine, and Lisa, seeing the success, encouraged me to keep at it. It was working, after all. Debts were being paid, and our lives were taking turns for the better. It was a simple economic exchange at first, my time as Christine for financial stability. But then, something shifted within me. The line between Chris and Christine started to blur. I felt a peculiar liberation under the guise of femininity, a freedom from the expectations tied to my given gender. It was as if Christine had uncorked a bottle of feelings and traits I had suppressed without even knowing it. I started to enjoy the process, the art of becoming Christine. The world saw her as confident, radiant, and capable. And somewhere along the line, I stopped seeing Christine as just a role to play. She was a part of me, a facet of my identity I never knew I had, or needed. Facing the mirror, I no longer saw Christine as an escape or a necessity. She was a choice, a choice to explore, to embrace complexity, to be more than what was expected. And as I signed contracts, posed for pictures, and interacted with people who only knew me as her, I found contentment in the balance. I was stuck as Christine, maybe I was finally freed by her presence in my life. She taught me that to understand oneself, sometimes you have to walk a mile in someone else's shoes, even if they are stilettos.